Hello everyone, good to see you Ting. Here we are, the final, we're a couple of days late, uh, which actually over 10 weeks, it's not too bad. I think we've consistently published on a Thursday, haven't we? Uh, uh, other than this last one. <laughs> I think there was one week, but yeah. <laughs> We've been but, a bit busy, especially, you know, we did play with the start of the school holidays as well. Yeah, but here we are. We got to the final thing. Ten weeks, series ten of The Great British Sewing Bee, unpicked our last episode where we talk about what went on, give you our thoughts, our opinions and a bit of analysis along the way and uh, sum up. Ah, <sighs> zipped by, isn't it? <laughs> wow. I was going to say it seemed like a bit of a slog to start off with, but it's certainly... yeah, I think uh, maybe yeah, the first four or five weeks it did. Uh, we were talking about the the connection with it, but I think it's from my point of view, from Diva Week onwards, boom, it's, you've I, I, we've just suddenly got what we love about the program and and really connected it, really enjoyed it. Okay, but here we are, the final, and there are the finalists of series 10, Elsa, Pasha and Luke, and three very, very worthy finalists, wouldn't you say, T? Well, yeah, but I think you'll find that that's what I said about five weeks ago, wasn't it, when I had <laughs> one of my rants. And I think, obviously, you know, me threatening not to watch if these three were the final <laughs> must, have, must have been heard by the great editing gods in the sky. So, uh, I think yeah, I, I was quite surprised that I've pulled it off. <laughs> <laughs> it was the the I think the when we did all the time analysis because we were seeing week after week of unfinished garments, but not by just one sewer who kept getting through. Maybe like had been in previous years, it was so many sewers just still not being able to complete. And I think we were having a rant at the time, weren't we? Well, yeah, because uh, you know credit to these three guys, they made it to the final. But when I had that rant, rant back in week four or five or whenever it was. These were the three that were more consistently finishing their garments. So, you know, at that point in time, it was kind of like, well, if you're going to have a final, I want people who are going to finish their their uh, mm. items in the final. So that was why at that point. And, and, and it's come true. Yeah. Uh, I was just looking over the um, the stats for Garment of the Week, these three. Ailsa had it twice with week three and week five. Luke had it once with week eight, and Pasha had it three times with week six, seven, and nine. So it's clearly showing they had skills, so worthy to be in the final. Yeah, absolutely. Stunning makes across the season. Can you remember any off the top of your head that you just went, yeah, love that? <laughs> now, come on. <laughs> After everything I've said about this season, I very much doubt there was anything I said that about. <laughs> I thought those magic loop pearls around your neck might <laughs> might be working their magic. Surely, <laughs> not not yeah, not. I mean, there, I mean, there was some good outfits yeah. throughout um, from various different sewers, but you know, I think especially these, well, especially these three. But Luke did show a good design. Um, and back and backed it up with sewing, you know, yeah. approach and and you know, Pasha's very very. I think she was the youngest, wasn't she? Yeah. possibly that we've ever had because I think she's only twenty. Um, but her skill level was so high. So you know, when she knocks Absolutely. out that alligator crocodile, yeah, week six, and, yeah, and that was that was a, a transformation challenge. Yeah, thing. so you know, it it uh, it just shows those skills and 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 Elsa. You know, she was true to her heritage and used the pleating and the kilting and, and the tartan mm. and, and all of those sorts of fabrics and designs. And and it was that kind of innovation from these three that has got them to the end. Not that the yeah. others weren't as innovative, but they these three seemed kind of committed to their their vision. And, and I think that's helped them, you know, establish who they were. And we understood who they were going into the final. Oh, absolutely. From, uh, I said this to Carol on All Gathered Up, I think from that diva week, we just suddenly connected with all of them and 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 learned a bit more about them, which we hadn't perhaps seen over the earlier weeks. Yeah. And they just suddenly bloomed, th these three. And as I say, getting uh, Elsa week five, then Pasha week six, week seven, then Luke week eight, and then Pasha week nine. It kind of just sums, sums up these sewers. But 
all very, very creative tech technicians for sure. Let's go into then the the first round, the pattern challenge, Ting. They had to make a pair of opera gloves. <gasps> you wouldn't want to do that, would you? No, and, <laughs> and I think, you know, the, we've, we've, had, we've aimed quite a lot of the producers for this series. And I, I know that it's, you know, we're 10 years in and, um, you know, trying to come up with different things and so on. I don't know how many people would sit and make a pair of opera gloves yeah. these days. Um, I mean, it's it was a, a technical piece of sewing, you know, talking about gussets and getting it to fit yeah. right. And then, of course, I, I mean, I, I presume they were told at the start. I don't know if I missed it. But obviously, when it came to the judging, when the model had to actually put them on, it, there was no hiding on, on, on what had gone yeah. wrong and, and whether things were going to fit or not. Um, you know, I, I think Luke... Well, obviously, with him coming first, but he did exceptionally well. I think they were the only ones that went on. Um, and, yes, and fitted. effortlessly. Um, and I, but I felt for Pasha because again, it's that time yeah. thing that we've talked about before. Because if you were doing it at home and you realised you put the thumb in the wrong way, you'd take the thumb out again. But because she was half an hour left, you know, you have to make a an executive decision on what you're going to do. Um, I also think she gave herself. Uh, a lot of hard work by using the lace. I yeah, think, you know, when yeah. when things went a bit wrong, it's very difficult to unpick lace and, and try to correct that. Um, so I, I can understand, because, I mean, they said to her, oh, you should have just taken it out and left it without a thumb um, rather than leaving it on. But I think, well, I think probably part of it was that trying to find the cotton thread that she oh, used to sew it absolutely. on all yeah. of that lace was just too difficult. And also, I think I'd like to, if that was me, I would have left it on. I want to see it finished, even though it's not right. Having it with no thumb would have looked unfinished as well. I think if, if she hadn't used the lace, perhaps, yeah. she would have perhaps seen that it was wrong. I think the lace itself made it very difficult yeah. when it was inside out. Because when, how do you know it's inside out, you know, with lace? And, you know, she even turned around and said, oh, you know, now I've made two, I think she made two left Two left hands. Well, so yeah. Uh, and I think if she'd have had a solid fabric like Elsa and Luke had, that might have, um, you know, uh, panned out a bit yeah. differently. But I can also understand her thinking, well, if this does work, it's going to stand out very much. So oh, from... it's, you've got but, to give her that, that, that risk-taking in the final. Never made, if you've never made a pair of gloves yeah. before, I wouldn't have gone with lace as my first No. Attempt. So she made a, you know, an executive decision there. And I think all of us, even if you were rooting for one of the other two to win, you would have still gone, oh, no, yeah. not lace. Um, it's, but if you want to wow them, you, you take a risk. So I, I think that's still there. You know, people will still go, you, you, you took that risk and you went for it. And it could have been an ut ultimate stunner couldn't it as you say yeah yeah but when you look at them hanging there you can see why luke did end up coming first because they hang great you can see them you can see their gloves you compare them to elsa's and you can see yes she, you know cut into that seam allowance and they're they're like a a, a wicked witch from a a, a cartoon aren't they <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean I, I mean i've never made a pair of gloves but part of me would probably turn around and say that I would work with a bigger seam allowance and then cut off the excess rather than cut the gloves with just half a centimetre. Yeah. So I think that's what it was, wasn't it? It was half, a half. yeah. Seam allowance. Whereas I would have cut them perhaps a bit bigger and then cut off the excess, maybe. When they were doing this round, it felt still... It didn't feel like a final. It was like, this seems really chilled. Like they were... I know Luke was was chatting away to the camera. I was like, wow, they seem so composed. I think also they gave them a lot. I mean, we spent the whole series complaining about time, but they gave them, um, I think it was three hours, wasn't it? To make yeah. these. So that, you know, an hour and a half per glove. And when you consider, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they're easy to make, but no. when you consider there's only one long seam down here, the fiddly bit was the, the fingers. So, yeah. you know, you're Repetition. talking you spend an hour making the fingers which you know is a long amount of time but then all yeah. you've got to do is zip up the other seam at the end so i think you know there was finally some recognition that um they needed time to do mm. this if they'd have come in and said you've got two hours even if it had been two hours they would never have got this finished no no 
Uh, but there was certainly, I, I felt watching it, oh, this is nice, nice atmosphere. This is final. Anyone could get it. But yes, it was uh, Luke to come first, Ailes the second and Pasha third. It, there was nothing to get angry about with the, the judges' decisions or the analysis. It was all correct, wasn't it? We could all see that. Yes. Yeah. But let's go on to the transformation challenge then, which, yes... We've had some good ones. We had a stunning one last week with the Thai transformation. Just felt perhaps, I know it's the final. They wanted to lift the spirits, perhaps take the pressure off, have a bit of fun. But did it work? Party paraphernalia. You had to make a fun, wearable, it had to be wearable outfit. And I think this is what caused some of the controversy. Uh, no extra fabric can be used, but they could use whatever they like in the haberdashery. Uh, decisions at the end of this, I don't know. I don't know whether many people are going <laughs> to be like, oh, but um, it's part napkins, paper napkins. God. What did well, you think? I, I just, well, I just felt a bit like you. It's the final. And I... I didn't really get the theme. I mean, I suppose you'd argue that, that you've got the opera gloves being a bit of a, and then you've got party here, and then they had to have like a, uh, I know that the key thing was draping, but it was almost like a red uh, carpet type rock. But there didn't seem to be something that consistently ran through no. the challenges. So this felt very disjointed, especially when we have had actually a couple here where I've had to tuck my slippers away. Normally they're being thrown with abandon on yeah. this challenge. Um, yeah. And this series... I, you know, despite everything else we may have said about it, they, there was a few of those challenges where they seemed to have it right. And I kind of get what they were trying to do, but I also then felt that they didn't perhaps recognise the amount of work that went in. I mean, I Elsa, I, I genuinely thought, what the hell are you doing? Because it wasn't wearable. You, well, you know, well, all you, I, do, all, you, all you would do is if you wanted to go on a night out and you had to stand there while I ran around you yeah, but, with a load of hunting. I disagree but, with you there because that's still wearable. They didn't ask for it to be repeatable wearable, did they? <laughs> well, no, I don't think any of it would be repeatable. But no, you, but you, you couldn't take it off that mannequin now and get into it. I, I think, you know, I understood okay. where they were coming from with that. And yeah. again, I don't know in 90 minutes whether she would have actually perhaps pinned that together and then almost cut it off and put in some sort of zip. Because she'd kind of done that with the top. Yeah. She kind of... Yeah. So, but I think she got so caught up in the idea, it was then, even herself, she realised that she couldn't get it on or off. Um, and then you had Luke, who painstakingly made his fabric. Yeah, he so sewed the speak. fabric out of those napkins, um, and then, yeah. And then created this dress. And it, look at the silhouette of that dress and the I structure know. that it had. I know. Um, and and yet it was Pasha that won, who ripped a couple of tablecloths before she finally got a green one that she kind of went there. And I know it was the asymmetrical off the shoulder, but all she'd done is really draped that silver around it. Um, and they were really impressed that she'd put Velcro in, yet... yet um, Luke Others. had made a, yeah. a dress with a zip. You know, <laughs> no. it was just kind of like... Mm. I didn't know whether... Esme just saw that lovely sparkle and went, oh, yeah, she just fell in love with it. So she all, she overruled Patrick, didn't she? <laughs> she <laughs> she did, said, right, then, Pasha's going to win this. But Luke had the big bow and the party I know, muscle. I know. That, which normally, that's enough to draw Esme's eye away. Yeah, yeah. There were, I think there were many more technical elements to Luke's if you were comparing against Pasha's. Um, I don't know. I don't know whether that was a, a producer thing to make it even. You've got one all if you yeah. if you give it to Pasha uh, or are we just overthinking that? I mean, we're probably overthinking it. But yeah. I, 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 the thing is, is you get to know the judges. And, you know, I'm assuming that these three were well, all of them have, have watched the Sewing Bee before. So you, you, you've got that kind of awareness of what their kind of <laughs> yeah. and expectations are. So... Therefore, you know, you can understand Luke thinking, well, if I can get a big bow on the back here. Yeah, or, or play whatever. to the strengths. Um, yeah. But, you if know, I, obviously if, that day if, Esme wanted the, the foil. Oh, she, as soon as she saw that one, she just went, oh, love it. She just, that that, that glittery. Uh, yeah, I, I think I texted you. I said, well, but Pasha's got this. <laughs> Which she did. Pasha had it. Luke second and Elsa third. 
Um, so there we are. We're going into the final with Luke and Pasha uh, equal uh, and Elsa down one. But who knows what uh, was in between them? Because, you know, Luke and Pasha, are they just a little bit above Elsa or are they a long way up? From the chat with uh, Patrick and Esme, I got the impression they thought they were nearly all equal, didn't it? That's how it came yeah, across to me. I mean, Did you, you know, with... We've said this before that it can come down to that last challenge anyway, but this was the final, and you know, we yes, regardless of what you just thought of that challenge, you then had um, Luke had won one, Pasha had won one, um, so therefore inherently they are ahead of Ailsa, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, uh, you know, it, indeed, it, it, even on that ground. But even if you were thinking that Luke had been hard done by with the second challenge, you'd still think that Ailsa was behind after that, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah. So the May to Measure, which was the one that uh, was all new, they had to uh, create an evening outfit, and there you see them all, but they had to drape the design first. They couldn't just have their pattern that they'd bought and then cut the fabric out. They had to drape it, and then from there, technically, uh, then get the, take it off the mannequin, use the real fabric, uh, and then cut that out again uh, from the draping uh, uh, originally. Uh, we've not seen it before. An exciting challenge, do you think? Certainly I think, needed more time. Yes, and um, it is a skill. I think, you know, not, not that I think I'd ever make it to the final, but, um, you know, it, it's one of those things where, I would find that quite intimidating oh, because I, yeah. I would work from a pattern that tells me exactly what to do. But again, I think it just goes to show what the designer that was in these three. Absolutely. For them to be able to see that when, yeah. it, when it isn't on paper or anything like that and, and you know, come up with the idea and then be able to execute it. That's a skill in itself. And I will put my hands up and say there's no way I could have done that at no, all. No, same here. Same here. I would have been, well, I... I still sew a pattern together upside down about <laughs> let alone starting from nothing draping it and then having to use that as your pattern this was phenomenal really what we've seen in front of us so there we are we have Ailsa on the far left with the tartan we have Luke in the middle with the black and white and we have Pasha on the right with the pink and it was really enjoyable watching this round because I felt I just at ease. I know Pasha started to wobble a bit towards the end, but everyone else seemed to be using confidence. I think so. But then I think also I said to you, it was a blink and you'll miss it because we seemed to start the challenge and then all of a sudden the announcement was made there was half an yes. hour left. And I was like, what? Hang on, did I nod off? Have I, have yes. I, missed, have I missed 20 minutes of the programme? Because, you know, given it was the final, and given that they'd never done anything like this before, I just felt that you know, it, it seemed a bit rushed and we didn't see the process. Now, we don't need to see, you know, five hours worth of sewing, but it did seem to go from, what are you doing? Oh, well, I'm doing this, to then suddenly, it, oh, we've yeah. got half an hour left. And I would have liked to have seen a bit more of the process, given that that's what it was being billed as, never done before, you know, everyone's got to do draping. Because we've had people who've draped in the past yeah. for their own choice. Yeah. But to force everyone to do it, I just felt that there was possibly more to be seen um, yeah. there with the production and, and and we kind of lost some of that and then Absolutely. suddenly it was the frantic you know half an hour left what have I got to do I know yeah that that editing which drives many people mad I know because they've put that in the comments yes they missed an opportunity there we could have had perhaps a more edited version of the transformation challenge just to give us a bit more time for this challenge for sure they um they did say uh, at the beginning of this they had time to plan and prepare at home so perhaps that's why some of them had, you know were, were showing more confidence because i was watching alsa uh, and i think i said to you oh, she could take this because to me she was coming across as really confident i've got this i've got this i've got this I loved that myself. I would, I want it, Elsa. Please, can I wear that, please? <laughs> See, I I wasn't a huge fan because I I I know that obviously the black bit there. Although I felt a bit like Patrick saying that I didn't really understand what it was trying to do, um, but I I felt for her to make what is essentially a kilt, yeah, was a bit of a safe choice to do. 
Because yeah, but as we've said before, bit, safe. Yeah, but but if you bit, execute it. But the draping bit was only really the black bit. Yes. And I didn't really understand what the black bit was trying to achieve. No, granted, um, I think that was fair evaluation from uh, the judges too. It kind of, you could see it there. It lost its direction maybe. Yeah, and, and you know, not that a kilt is easy to make. Um, I remember no. making thousands of them for you but um <laughs> the, but i i just felt that as a draping challenge actually because of her background and we've seen her do the pleating and the and the tartan and the kilting in other you know um uh, other mates yeah. throughout the series i i just felt that she should have done something that may have been a slightly more spectacular looking um I mean, don't get me wrong. The top is spectacular. Oh, it's here. indeed. But, but yes. We kind of lost what it was trying to, yeah. or what she was trying to do with the whole, the overall yeah. outfit. Do you know, that's taken me right back to what, 2012, 2010, when we made all those tartan dresses. Well, well I think, you, I, think I don't think. Is a, is a <laughs> generous word. There. For the school production. <laughs> wow. That was, we had some hot pink and grey tartan, didn't we, for our for our girls of our private school of Moby Dick the Musical. That was fabulous. Um, yes, but I think what we saw here was Ailsa's technical strength as a technician, yeah. didn't we? And, and, you know, like I've just said, I would, I would be absolutely intimidated by this challenge. And I think what Ailsa probably did is gone, well, I can knock out that, that kilt quite yes, easily. Yes, absolutely. And therefore yeah. I can then concentrate on the black bit, which yeah. will be seen more as the draping, because the kilt wasn't really draped. It, she made a kilt, and yes. then she draped yeah. the black bit. So, um, you know, but then that is her strength, and that would be the same with yeah. me. I would turn around and go, well, I can make, you know, a skirt, or I can make a pair of trousers or whatever, and then I'll drape the other bits yeah. around and, it. Indeed. And, and I think that's and, what she does. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, her skill has got her to the final. This yeah. was you know, sewn and everything like that. But I think it then also kind of sealed her fate because it seemed a bit safe looking. Mm. But if you're entering a competition, I'm just thinking if I, you know, I'm in that position and you have to, you have to submit your 10 patterns uh, regardless of wherever you think you get. Because I think, wasn't it in Diva Week, Luke said, oh, I haven't practiced because I don't think, I didn't think I was even going to get this far. So... <laughs> You would you would try and add an element of well I've made that before I've I've done plenty of tartan skirts before you would try and put it in wouldn't you uh, because to take off the edge and make yourself feel a bit more comfortable if that is yeah, the case yeah. we don't know okay let's go to uh, alphabetical order let's look at Luke's now then which you saw in the middle the black and white number fabulous design. I, I I love this, and not just because, as I've, I've said the last couple of weeks, that I, I was kind of rooting for Luke. I, I felt disappointed that he wasn't able to get the ruffles on the bottom. Yeah. But yeah. part of me went, do you know what? If he'd have left them off, it, it probably still would have minded. It would have still looked. Because Absolutely. The, 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 the bit of it was the top. It was how he managed to drape not just a jacket, half a jacket. That white half a jacket. Yeah. And, and then the top underneath it, um, you know, that was where the draping and the folds and the pleats and everything yeah. was. Um, and that's where a lot of his work went into with that. Um, and I think, you know, he could have done quite a voluminous skirt with that material, chucked a few go days in so it actually, you know, came out quite a lot. Um, and then he wouldn't have had to worry about trying to put all of those drops because he didn't get them all on. No, and he readily no. admitted that. But I think, you know, if he'd have made it more voluminous by putting the, the go days in, mm. he could have got away without having to put the, the, the netting around the outside. And it still would have looked absolutely stunning. Not that this didn't. Um, I think if he'd have managed to get all of the netting on, it would have looked just as stunning as he wanted it to, you know, in the picture that was there <coughs> originally. Um, but I think, you know, the, the real work was really shown in that top. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's yeah. not a jacket. It's a top. I don't know what to call it because it's not actually a jacket, but it's half a jacket, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and again, t uh, well, Elsa's model was great. This model, uh, Luke's model, was just working it as they came down the catwalk. There, it looks stunning. Well, I would do exactly the same for you. I would work the floor <laughs> and show off your design. Oh, charmer you. Okay, let's move on to Pasha's. Uh, which we saw the pink one. That's a lot of pleating in that, wasn't there? Ooh. 
Yeah, and I mean, that that seemed to be the theme with the draping. And I know that with draping, when you're draping it onto the mannequin and the model and that, you're naturally putting these creases and pleats and that in yeah. because you're not cutting out a flat pattern. You're, you're draping and then pulling it up and, and down into places to try and get the shape that you want. So you haven't got the time to do that and then cut it out. That it, you know, a draped dress is going to inherently have those uh, pleats and creases and, and everything in it. So, uh, you know, that was a lot of work to get it, the shape that she wanted. Yeah. But she it does phenomenally well to get that shape. Oh, it was short at the front, though. There was an error. There was, was I, it a bit missing? I don't know. Again, because they shot through this. I, I, I know. It, what, what frustrated me is they took, we all knew this was the final. Yeah. So we had the judging and then the whole, you know, who is it? And then the congratulations from everyone else. And then the what are they doing next? And that all seemed to have been taken from the final challenge disproportionately. Yeah. Whereas I think that they should have cut down the earlier On two the challenges a bit. So Agreed. we could actually see this fully and still have time for the presentation at the end. But yeah, it, it, it is very, very high on that side there, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you know, one false move and the whole world as you go. On, I think she admitted something was missed out. She didn't have time. And I, yeah. I, 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 I missed that bit. But I think there was something there that should have come over and she didn't get to put it, put it on. Were you still at this point going, OK, Luke got one, Pasha got one. Did, were you going, yeah, this is a no-brainer, Luke's got this? Or were you, like me, going, oh, Elsa could cause some issues here? No, because I didn't like Elsa's. OK. But I don't know if I didn't like Elsa's because I loved Luke and okay. Luke's dress and I wanted Luke to win. So I don't know if that kind of shaded my thing there. But I, I think even though he didn't get all the ruffles on, I, I'd got the point in my head where I was like, he's got this, he's won. And I'm not, normally there is that little bit of edge in there, but I yeah. seemed to jump on the bandwagon before it was announced. And and then there was part of me while we were waiting and, and, and I was kind of there going, well, it has <laughs> to be, it has to be him. Surely. Yes, yeah. Because Pash, I, I, had, I kind of discounted Elsa's. Plus, she hadn't done well in the earlier challenges. Yeah. And then, like you said, um, Pasha had admitted that it was a bit too short on that side. And again, I can't remember what exactly had gone wrong there. But there was also something else, I think, you know, just in the construction of it. And so part of me was like, it has to be Luke. And there was this thing about if it isn't Luke, well, then it well and truly is over for me and the sewing bee. Because <laughs> I, but I agreed with the judge, apart from the transformation challenge, yeah. I'd agreed generally what they'd said throughout the episode as opposed to constantly going against what they've said so i was like well i've agreed with everything they've said and i think luke should win so therefore luke is going to win yeah i think even though i was thinking and saying to you oh Elsa could have this looking at that final judging of the black i could go actually i do understand that the the pleating and the different directions of it it just didn't completely holistically yeah. work from that point of view so yes it then had to be the winner was indeed luke and there we are i've grabbed this screenshot just because i think it captures everything about him and his his, his oh there so uh, sorry we, we were trying to be really good uh of their genuine what's that um uh Surprise. what's the word kind hey of. It's when you surprise think or... surprise, but um, like genuine genuineness of of yeah. that. I'm really yeah, and I, I just and the the girls being so supportive there as well as they turn around. I know anyone would when you've just found that you've not the winner and someone else is, but it just I just that, it's a lovely image. I think. Well, and I think you know it sums up like we were just saying. I think you know, of course, if I was there, I would have wanted to win. But I think you could have objectively, if you were Pasha or Elsa, yeah. I think you probably looked at Luke's and went, well, if I'm going to lose, that's what I want to lose to. Um, so th I think that's why they're genuinely happy for him yeah. as well, uh, because they they probably looked at what he's created and gone, well, yeah, of course, it's a no brainer. And also those three are really, really good. I know sometimes perhaps over the last finals, I can't remember now, maybe one has been super, 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 and then the others perhaps not so high. I just felt these three, because did, did we say it 
might have even been week five did, did when, when we were having the rant that it, it actually was edited in a way the way things were going anyone could have won because it seemed like everyone was of an equal footing skill wise didn't it it did initially but also because we were seeing so many unfinished garments um there was a possibility that if you had a bad week, then you'd go yeah. home. So yeah. if Luke had had a bad week three weeks ago, I think he would have gone home. You know, I, I, I think that was the risk that was being taken. <coughs> this week because we never saw a clear front runner mm. come out of the, you know, the blocks running, so to speak, in week one. It kept us on our toes a bit more, perhaps, than in the past where we've yeah. latched on and gone, oh, they're really good all the way through. But as I say, when you see that Pasha's had that garment of the week three times, Elsa twice, and Luke's got the once, they are they, it just they're all their skills were coming across in this final. So it was it was just wonderful. But yes, definitely to see Luke get it, you can completely understand why and how lovely was it. Uh, just really nice. And and you were obviously well well chuffed, weren't you? Well chuffed. Yes. I always, I always have a little tear when someone wins as well. Yeah. So I was quite happy at home and gave a little round of applause. Yeah, and stood up it, as well. It, so it was a lovely, lovely final. And of course, when we get uh, to the final, we do have that nice little sequence of what they're doing now, and that's always a giggle, isn't it? It's like, oh, oh, that's oh, yes, I remember. <laughs> it is a giggle, but what I also found was quite funny. The number of um, the we're not, we're not actually sewing. <laughs> I know. There was another like, oh, they've decided to go back to school, or they've decided to go <laughs> on holiday, and they've not. They've decided to draw up a wedding dress and are doing six bridesmaids and everything like. Yeah, you know, there was there wasn't a lot of. <laughs> I've got on to do more sewing. <laughs> which yes, which we have had before, haven't we? Oh well, there you are. Viewers, what do you think? Were you pleased? I know many people on the comments last week were saying, I don't mind which three, uh, but there were many Team Luke, uh, uh, many Team Pasha and Team Elsa, and I, and I can understand that. Uh, I, it, it, regardless of how it went, I think I would have been happy if we, in another dimension uh, Elsa or Pasha got it. It just, it just felt a nice final from that point of view, didn't it? Well, it did. But I mean, if one of the others had got it, I would have been mildly disappointed. <laughs> so there we go. That's 10 weeks done. <sighs> How do you feel about the series as a whole, Ting? Well, it's certainly been a roller coaster this year. I think, you know, I, I, we started off being quite negative. And, and then, you know, I did say to you look, this week, if it's a 10 minute episode, because we're just going to focus on the good things, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. And yeah. You know, that's what we've tried to do the last, you know, three or four weeks is just go and say what's really good. Because even if you're complaining about the lack of time or the, the challenges, this is pre-recorded last year. It, yeah. it, it wasn't, you know, it's not something that they're going to go, oh, let's change it this week. So, you know, I hope for, I'm hoping that they've listened not just to us. I'm not, you know, that arrogant to feel that, you know, uh, Love Productions have got us streaming into their offices. But there was a lot of chatter online. You know, we said how Patrick had was doing that kind of mm, question thing yeah. in theatre, and, and he got asked about timings, and he was having to yeah. justify what was going on. So I hope they stop and think, because obviously they're advertising at the moment for uh, contestants. So I hope they do stop and kind of think and say, what can we learn from this series? Uh, you know, what was the kind of feedback? Because, you know, I would hate for it to kind of just peter out because people got annoyed with this one series and don't give it a chance next year because we had a very worthy winner. We had a very worthy finalists, you know, yeah. in, in those three in the end. Yeah. And that's just how it worked out this year. Whereas last year, Asthma came out and in the first week and we were like, oh, yeah. Oh, can we really talk about her this early on? Because there's another <laughs> yeah. nine weeks to go. So it, it's just how it goes sometimes. But I, you know, I, I hope that we may well we make an eleventh year, and you know that maybe things are picked up a bit. You know, next year, um, you know, it'll be a different batch of sewers as well. We'll see yeah. what their skills are like. Yeah. Well, we've got sewing on national telly 
at prime time. It doesn't often happen, does it? So we we want that on, yet I know we criticise bits of the show, uh, and that's only because we're sewers. We want it better. We, 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 we want more of that. But I suppose the average Joe Bloggs who is not a sewer, is it good entertainment for them? Uh, are we taking it too far? Are we criticising and critiquing it too far? But do you know what? I would rather it stayed on BBC Two and was the yeah. thing that we loved than it moved in the way that it has done, has moved to BBC One to become populist entertainment. Today. Yeah, completely I, I, I agree. Good point. Think, you know, having a niche is sometimes good because we would have all still tuned into BBC Two. The hard yeah. and fast so yeah. as the people who watched it for nine yeah. years would have still tuned into BBC Two if it was on BBC Two. I understand you want to chase a primetime audience. I understand that the license fee, you know, the funding and trying to get audiences up and, you know, putting it on BBC One and you get that spillover audience because it's had the repair shop beforehand. So a lot of the people who watch the repair shop would probably go on to mm. watch. So I understand the whole scheduling point of it as well. But then you've got to, you've got to remember your core audience. And, you know, we watched it for, what, seven years? Or I certainly did. Seven years, six years on BBC Two. It's only the last two or three years that it's been on BBC One. Uh, and I would have carried on watching it if it was on BBC Two. I would, I, yeah. You know, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have done anything to me. Um, a very, very, been- very valid point. I think that's a, a probably one of the most important points, actually. Yes, how it's changed since... I think it was Joe, wasn't it? When Joe took over C- Series well, 5, moved, I think that was. When it moved yeah. to BBC One, that was yeah. the issue. Yeah. I think, you know, we, we, we do get some of what we want. Uh, we can't leave this week, although she didn't put in an appearance this week. You know, we get our Amber moments, and I always yeah. sit up a little bit higher when Amber yeah. comes on because I want to learn <laughs> about what she's going to tell us. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. that, that element of it was, you know, was always there when it was on BBC Two with the techniques. I mean, Amber wasn't on it as much then. That was a relatively new thing. But... You know, that history bit of it, if you're going to put it in, put that bit in so you yeah. learn something along yeah. the way as well. It hasn't got to be learning how to do the perfect pleat. No. But learning where pyjama pants came from in the 1940s or whenever it was, you know, that that's that little interesting fact. Uh, yes. About the next day at work. I, I, it's just, I think the bits that I actually really enjoy Kyle as the presenter. I thought he gave a lovely gravitas to it, grounded it, uh, and and I understand he has to do those into bits because that's probably what they tell him to do, right? We need you to do the twenty minute call, the five minute call, the two minute call. Well, that's what you're paid to do, isn't it? At the end of the day, indeed. But I don't think they need that. They don't need those, do they? Because we it doesn't. I understand why it's there in the edit to try and make us watching it go, oh my word, oh god, is it going? Is 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 Elsa going to get it? It's there to create that tension to us to keep watching because they're worried that we're going to turn over. But actually, we don't need that, do we? The even the average Joe doesn't need that. They know and what we're watching. If you're a sewer and you see on the telly, they turn around and go, you've got 10 minutes left. And somebody stood there holding a sleeve in one hand and the jacket in the other, having not even inserted it. I can tell you right now, you're not getting that done in 10 minutes. So don't edit it together as if that person's going to sit down and get that put in in 10 minutes. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Well, I think, I think, didn't it? Well, I think, well, I'm sure it was this week. One minute going and they still haven't put a zip in. Well, you know, (laughs) it's going to take me one minute to hold the zip, just get it to the sewing machine. (laughs) Let alone walk it in and then pop it out. Yeah, that's infuriating. But I can understand why they're there because they think of the the entertainment value, but we don't need those. Well, Get rid of those. Say, that, that plays to the populist, you know, yes. competition. The format. You know, yeah. you've got uh, you've got 10 minutes left, so let's show somebody with yeah. five pattern pieces still on the floor. Yeah. And then the person who's never sewed in their life watching at home is going to go, oh, they've done well in five minutes. And it's like, <laughs> no, like, that was built three hours yeah. ago. <laughs> But yes, you're right. If they if they do see, if they do read the comments, uh, give them more time, please. Just give them more time, and and we'll continue watching. Because the the thing that broke my heart when giving this analysis and watching it was, I the the idea of watching someone not finishing and then seeing three or four people not finishing, and then the judges saying 
Well, you haven't done this and you haven't done this. Well, no, because you haven't given them enough time. It's not because they're not a good sower. It's because you haven't given them enough time. And then we lost that connection because you, you as an audience member, you, you grab onto the sower you like because of the makes they do. Because you go, wow, that was fantastic. Oh, I can't wait to see what he does next week. And then he does something amazing again next week because of the time. It is purely because of the time. And I think they've lost a lot of uh, audience from that because we just couldn't connect, could we? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like I said, hopefully when they start this next series, which I presume they record after the summer, um, yeah. you know, hopefully they will have a look at that and maybe won't be so uh, ranty next year. <laughs> yeah, and maybe we'll watch because I didn't know whether I'm like, I, it's true, I think it might be the first season where I've, I've, I've not really been inspired to make. I, well, I did start to make, look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't moved. I started doing my shirt and I've got to my, my... <laughs> Where is it? It's this way. Look. My lovely gingham. I've done my my uh, my, my button band <laughs> but but no arms. Would it, so would it help if I stand here and go, you've got 30 <laughs> minutes left? <laughs> I'll I'll see if I, get, I can get the inspiration and get it finished for 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 next year. Um, if you want to come back, should we come back? To... Oh, we can't leave the public hanging like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, let us know. There we are, everyone. Well, I, mean, I was uh, going to say what we want to do is wait until we see episode one, and if they don't see an unpicked within three days of episode okay. one, then they probably know whether we're coming back or not. <laughs> But we are thrilled. That was a, a lovely final. Three stunning sewists. But Luke, very, very well done. You had some cracking makes there. Um, and I'll look forward to making the little montage where we show off all your makes because I know that went down well last year when we did it for asthma. Uh, so I look forward to making that content. It's been a pleasure chatting with you for 10 weeks. You've got, uh, what, six weeks off now, Ting, so you need to put well, your feet up. Five. Oh, five, because you had a week already. We really had one week. <laughs> um, we'll miss chatting to you all, um, uh, but it has been a pleasure. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch. It has made a huge impact on the shop uh, as well with regard to bills, uh, uh, which is greatly appreciated. But we love doing it because ultimately we are crafters uh, and it's been lovely sharing uh, that experience with you all. Well done to the sewers and we'll see you whenever, everyone. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>